being your own CEO. This is a weekly success circle intended especially for solopreneurs. We get together because we enjoy each other's company and we like exchanging ideas and information and doing lots of experimentation. We all give and receive support. I think you will know more about what we all stand for if you review the operating principles on the Hangout uh, page on my website. So my name is Lowell Ann, and I've been in business for a long time helping people get to where they want to go through coaching and consulting. Uh, and it's nice to um, um, see that uh, Heidi has joined us. I, I was going to apologize this morning for being the only female here. <laughs> so <laughs> glad you came by. <laughs> So I think our viewers will want to know uh, who's with us this morning. Um, let's see. I think I'll I'll begin at the other end of the uh, the film strip this morning. Uh, Roland, how would you like to introduce yourself? Hi everybody, Roland from MinMax Media, and I sponsor the DIY Live Streaming Show dot com website. And Bill and I, Bill Graham, on my one side or the other, I'm not sure which, um, sponsor the Saturday Morning Marketing Smarties Show. And we are running a contest right now, but probably the biggest news in my life is my daughter got married Sunday and I'm still recovering. So it was a good event, a lot of warmth, and but a lot of people having a great time and we had some fun. So it was a great celebration. Thank you. Well, right on. <laughs> And uh, so you got to practice your public speaking, I, I, I understand. You know, it was great because I didn't shed a tear. <laughs> and w which, you know, my daughter got married, so I figured the, the odds of me getting to the event without crying are pretty slim to none. But um, the only time I did was when the, <laughs> excuse me, had a spasm there. When the groom did his uh, speech, at the altar, and he declared his vows. Then, then it was a little tough. <laughs> but he, but right on. Katie, my daughter, gave her vows. I was pretty good. She was laughing and enjoying herself, so that was easy. Oh, so it sounds like she wasn't nervous then. I'm sure she was nervous, but she she got through it very well. Oh, cool. <laughs> That's cool. Neat. Well, Thank glad you, you're here. You. Thanks for the music. <laughs> uh, Paul, how about you? You're next in the in the film strip. Thanks, Lil Ann. Well, my name is Paul Murray, and I'm about uh, two and a half blocks away from Lil Ann, and uh, this seems to be the only way we meet these days. Uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> my company's TTG International Management, and we simply take ideas and turn them into profitable action. And thanks for being here, Lowland, and providing us this opportunity. Oh, uh, you're most welcome. Thank you for for joining us. It's always nice to see you. And you're right. We we could meet for coffee one day. You know, we're yeah. both not very far away from the coffee shop. <laughs> yeah. Halfway in between. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh dear. So uh, now Nathan, um, welcome here. We haven't seen you for a while and I I think I noticed some maybe on Facebook that you've moved. Uh, that would be an understatement. Um, yeah, kind of a circuitous story. I won't get into that part of it. But I'm actually, at this exact moment, I'm coming to you from a little town called Mescales, which is in between Buturis and Puerto Vallarta in Mexico. I'm uh, house-sitting, and that was a rather 
bizarre story about how that came about, but I'm here until uh, middle of September. So uh, that's what's going on right now. Oh, right on. Yep. Isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it amazing how we can we can be almost anywhere and still connect with people we know. <laughs> I know. I'm about so. In in terms of perspective, uh, for <laughs> those of you in Victoria, I'm about three thousand miles away from you. Yeah. And I'm on Central Time, as opposed to uh, <laughs> Pacific Time. Right. Oh, right on. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, well, I hope uh, I hope uh, your move is was a good one. It was okay. Yes, just fine. Right on. So now, Tim, you seem to be the next one in line. Uh, what's new with you? Oh, well, busy as usual, uh, progressing forward on my campaign for helping people gain health and happiness through creativity. Uh, sometime today or tomorrow morning, I will be putting up the latest installment video of tips on how to proceed towards that, as well as in the very near future, giving out uh, video demonstrations and live demonstrations of my doing my artwork. And right that's from Tim Longwell of Longwell Art, and I'm in southeastern Oklahoma, which is probably about 2,000, 2,200 miles from you. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I, um, I, and, and you, you folks are all saying this, and I realized that I never said in my intro where I, where I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so welcome here, Tim. Glad you're, uh, glad you made it. So, Jay, uh, how about you? What's new with you? What's new with Jay? Well, I'm currently broadcasting from the Russian space station. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Jay, and my company is Magi Studios. I help people get started in the world of online marketing through coach, consulting, and training. Hailing from Victoria, British Columbia, uh, what's new? Um, well, geez, you know, summer's always the, the typical lull of the uh, internet marketing world, uh, which means... Um, kind of restructuring businesses, whether it be my own or my clients, uh, restructuring their SEO programs. Um, I have a, uh, a after, <laughs> after many people asking me to create one, I've created a, 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 a couple different coaching programs. So uh, working on that uh, and all the course content is ready and just need to organize and structure the, the layout of it. So. Um, yeah, it's it's crazy how many people wanted that. So I, I don't know why they'd want to see me more often than they already do. So, <laughs> so but it is what it is. Uh, so thanks for having me here. Yeah. Oh, well, Jay, busy is good. Well, it's the curse I have to live with, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh, glad you made it this morning. So, Fred, how about you? Hi everyone, I'm Fred Jones with OurFutureLeaders.ca. I coach uh, online coaching for young people, uh, Generation Z or Z, whichever way you pronounce it, and help them get self-confidence and communication and leadership skills for the future that they're about to face, which as we know is gonna be very dynamic. Uh, currently, I'm also relocated. I am house sitting the same as Nathan. I have a French bulldog that uh, by the name of Indiana Jones, same last name as me. And Indiana and I have been getting along for about a week and we have another week before his, I guess his owner comes back from France. So this is a French French Bulldog. This, Fra this French Bulldog came all the way from France as a puppy four years ago. Interesting little man, Indiana <laughs> Jones. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. And I'm located, I'm located in Victoria as the same as Loella Anna. Few others. Fred, do you have to talk to the French bulldog in French? Like, does it? <clears throat> it's. I mean, that's not a joke. Like, is, does it he's, understand? No, he's, bi he's bilingual. Okay. No, he's bilingual. That's cool. Honestly, he is. I got a list of English words that he understands. Yeah, you see. Si vous plaît. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he's bilingual. Cool. Dog. <laughs> Parisian or or uh, Quebecois? <laughs> uh, no, the fellow's from Guadeloupe, so in oh, Parisian. Okay. He's actually in France at the moment, visiting relatives in France. But they're from Guadeloupe originally, and he, yeah. But he does speak Quebecois as well. 
I don't know about the bulldog, but the owner does. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah, we were we were talking about that in the green room before you came, Jay, about <laughs> about <laughs> whether the whether the the dog speaks <laughs> what what language. <laughs> so it's interesting. <laughs> so uh, glad you're here. Um, Fred, um, any uh, anything new from the uh, from the fire emergency front? Oh, what they've done is they've let some of the people back, but there's still about twenty thousand or twenty three thousand still people still waiting to try and get back to their houses. So mm -hmm. maybe that'll happen. But uh, yeah, they're still calling people out to go and help those people who are evacuated because they're all volunteers and they get yeah. worn out and tired. So. Yeah, there's still call outs for people to volunteer right on well um i i sure i sure do hope that that all this fire emergency uh, ends soon it's uh, it's very disturbing to think that people have to go through that so um bill what about you how are you doing i'm doing great um, my name is Bill Graham. I'm coming to you from Belize, uh, where my website is BillDoesBelize.com, and where I share unbelievable or what I refer to as the unbelievable truth to help people make an informed decision on their move to Belize. And I'm happy to be here today. I'm going to be your comment manager. Well, comment manager for the people in the audience, and I'd like to just acknowledge that uh, Richard Wright did check in. And Ms. Eileen is with us on her break, so we thank her for joining us on her break. Right and, on. Uh, yeah. For anyone else out there, sign in. Let us know uh, where you're coming from, and please ask your questions and leave your comments. Cool. And thank you for that role, Bill. Uh, much appreciated. <laughs> My pleasure, Roland. So, uh, Heidi, how are things? Um, um, I, I was seeing things on... Um, Instagram that uh, make me think you're very busy right now. I was very busy the whole week, the whole last week. I cooked for about 15, 16 people. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. I was busy the whole day. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm breathing a little bit and we can breathe. I'm, by the way, in Italy and we had a big drought. We still have little water, but Today, finally, it rained a little bit. And so I hope all these uh, fires we have here, because some people want to see the world burning, because they are hardly ever by accident, but somebody puts the fire in. So I hope they will be out now by the rain. So mm. and a little bit more, or let's say, less preoccupied that it will come to us, because every summer this is... <laughs> Um, and I heard about the evacuation there. Uh, it's no joke. It's really no. 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 Yeah. And no. Uh, altogether, I'm sitting here in my paradisointegrale.com, but our main occupation online is the wisdomfactory.net, where we do broadcasts. Now we have a sort of a interval, but we will have one, at least one broadcast in August and maybe one or two in September. And in October, we start again. Aha, right on. Well, I'm glad you made it. And uh, just just to, uh, to let everyone know, I did get a response from Alana early this morning in Ireland, um, who has some company from California. So uh, she won't be with us this morning. So, so um, welcome everybody. Happy that everybody made it. And uh, I, we didn't we didn't talk about this before uh, before we started the broadcast. I wondered if everybody knows what the topic is this morning. <laughs> uh, so I um, thought we uh, would uh, have some discussion about what um, what is engagement. Uh, is it is it uh, the new uh, the new marketing or what is it? Is it is it uh, marketing or sales or advertising <laughs> or in my little thing a waste of time? Um, 
And I might note that um, I've been cruising around uh, visiting various websites in the last day or two. And one of the one of the things I've been noticing is um, there seems to be a, a, a trend happening out there. When you visit a new website, up pops a little uh, chat box where uh, you're invited to have a, have a chat or ask a question or whatever. And I, uh, I as I thought about that, I thought, well, that that. Um, probably is a, a, another aspect of that we're seeing of this whole concept of engagement as part of our marketing uh, activities. Um, and I, I, um, <laughs> I, just for the fun of it, I, I did a, a, a web search on the word engagement. And of course, what I got was engagement to be married. <laughs> So, <laughs> so uh, I guess engagement in that in that uh, sense of the word almost means um, um, well a, a commitment. So, um, and I I thought about that, and I thought, well, if from a marketing perspective, how do, how does that fit? Um, that maybe. Um, engagement does signify some sort of a personal commitment to maybe good service or um, um, yeah getting uh, getting to know a person or whatever so I, I suppose commitment uh, does fall in, um, into um, what is known now as business engagement um, and um, some some other things that I noticed were um, that engagement is sort of um, fits into the the, um, the the development of a of a re, uh, an emotional re, uh, relationship. So um, I guess if you think of the old fashioned um, marketing or advertising sense. It was just pushing information, and uh, I suppose that maybe if there was a story or some sort of a picture, there was some kind of emotional connection. But I think engagement takes the uh, emotional uh, relationship uh, much further. Um, and I think that in, in engagement, does um, it, it? It certainly is involved in the whole development of trust. So, but um, I, I'm still uh, I'm still sort of wondering whether um, social engagement is is really going to replace, or is it is it marketing? Is it sales? Is it advertising? Or is it is it just making friends? <laughs> So I wondered how um, how uh, the rest of the group, how you're making use of um, social engagement, and what uh, how you react to it. How how does it how's it how does it work for you? Uh, Jay, uh, I think oh, I'm getting neck on this. I think online engagement has. Uh, well, it's been around, you know, or at least online engagement has been around for a while. Um, we all remember the forum days, um, or even what was before that. It was the uh, billboard news news billboard days. I don't even remember what it was called, but uh, bulletin board days, right? So there we go. So that that was the you know the classic form of of online engagement. It really was the the inception, I think, of social media. Um, but I think online engagement is is very important, and it's still you know very strong. It's just changed forms, you know. Uh, it's it flows, you know. It's an it is an entity, and it flows with the sign of the time. So right now, online engagement is really uh, today's trend is through social media, and also now through uh, live engagement so where you're doing Facebook live YouTube live what we're doing right now um, where it's more more video based uh, or online video based engagement uh, and I think that's 
I love that personally. I think it's a great way to to build trust because uh, in today's world, with so many um, <clears throat> scams and and online schemes out there, um, it's hard to get people to buy things that you're offering, especially when it's on the internet. Because you know, according to many people, the internet is just a big giant scam. So, um, mm. so I think when you're when you're building trust. Or when you're trying to sell things, you know, and it doesn't matter what it is, what it, whatever the end result is, if it's a lead acquisition, if you're trying to get people to call, click, or come by, you know, I think building trust through the the most common way is really important. <clears throat> and I think right now it's through video uh, engagement. So um, whether it be Facebook Live or, or or something like that. Now that's not to say that you can still build engagement and build trust through uh, other forms such as commenting on your, you know, or replying to people when they leave a comment on your site. Uh, never been a big fan of the chat uh, bots personally. Uh, I find they're more of a, an annoyance than anything. Um, <clears throat> or at least they need to figure out the timing as to when those things should show up, yeah. right? Because I don't think when you first arrive on a website, you're not gonna wanna ask a question. And I think many times these little chat bot things pop up and go, "Oh, hey, what do you want? <laughs> How can I help you?" <laughs> it's like the uh, it's like the salesperson that that comes right at you it's the moment you walk in, yeah. right? You need to have that timing before uh, people come in, and 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 or you need to have that timing before you know you ask them uh, what they want. So anyway, those those are my two cents on uh, engagement. So. So Jay, um, I, I'm glad you brought that that uh, that up. That that timing is key. Not only, I mean, yes, in those chat bots, uh, I agree. They they can be annoying if they're not timed in the right way. But um, I'm also uh, thinking about uh, engagement online on kind of a broader scale, and I've I've noticed that. There are some people who come come on come on to a platform, and they dive right in, and they they want you to to uh, to get into a uh, to a face to face conversation with them immediately, and that doesn't work. It it uh, the timing of of all of this uh, engagement is a, is a very important piece, and it. Um, and, and when I say timing, I mean it needs to be kind of a gradual thing. So I'm visualizing. I'm I um, I stumble on somebody. Um, let's um, let's say for example. Um, well, I I remember I'm sitting in on um, uh, Eileen um, Miss Eileen's one of her um, one of her live stream uh, videos, and. I remember her suggesting to people that were in there that had never met each other that um, so um, she was encouraging everybody to click the little uh, the, the little button that um, so that you could get to know the other people that were there. Well, um, so I did that with one person and got to know that person and that person responded in a you know a, a w in a very distant kind of way so when you reach out to somebody uh, it needs to be done in a subtle kind of way that that works and then the, the then the the, uh, the engagement kind of increases um in a very gradual way, it, it, it so I guess it really um, amounts to the way the trust building happens. You know, you connect with somebody, but in a very, very um, superficial way to begin with, and it becomes a little deeper as time goes on. And so now I can think of that uh, one one person that I met on Eileen's show um, that I like what uh, I liked what he had to say so I I um, subscribe to his his uh, channel and so I go in now and I I 
watch a few things that he does and leave a few comments. So that's the kind of thing that I, I, I mean that uh, the, about timing and it, 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 you just can't dive in and, and um, uh, create a, um, a relationship um, right away. So anybody else to react in the same way that I've just described? Like if you find somebody dives in, you, it makes you want to back off. So Bill. Well, not necessarily back off, but you don't necessarily have to dive in with them. And I think when you Googled engagement and it came up with a, uh, an engagement to be married, I think the two are very similar in the sense that we don't often go out and meet somebody and the next day propose to them. I know that happens sometimes, but typically there's a, a bit of a courtship where we get to know each other. Then we get engaged, which is a, a more serious uh, of a relationship. And it's the same thing in marketing. You have to explore that relationship. And then at some point, assuming everything is good, there's there will be a marriage between the two people whether it's for somebody buying your product or for somebody following and sharing what you do um but so to compare the two i think that uh, they're very very similar in the sense of uh how the progression works mm. so the it is a progression for sure yeah so Paul, you're you're very much into sales and marketing. Uh, you um, that's been been your life. Um, how how do you um, um, see the the whole engagement piece and the timing piece? Um, I I think we all have been exposed to engagement, and it's a funny thing. It, it's it's somewhat personal. Uh, and you you know when uh, I think our preferences happen because we have a uh, it it sort of feels right. So for example, when we talk about chatbots, you're talking about chatbots on websites as an example. Mm -hmm. uh, I happen to like chatbots, uh, but I f I use the chatbots. Uh, and Facebook Messenger because I'm in Facebook a lot anyway and so I don't have to go anywhere so if I want travel I just type up kayak and 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 I'm there and I can discuss it so if I'm in Messenger and I'm messaging back and forth with a friend of mine about a trip that we're thinking about we can both get into kayak right away and and get the answers we need so we don't have to go out of where we are so it, it, it our engagement is is just easier uh, because that's where we are. Um, that's sort of my thought on where chatbots are going. Uh, the thing I like about chatbots on websites is spends a, a, his life designing websites and does a good job and, and has lots of of reasons why they're put together. But I don't often think the way Jay does. That's why if I need a website done, I would go to Jay. <laughs> <laughs> But what, so when I come on a site, if there's a chat bot there and I can ask it what I want, it saves me mucking around trying to figure out where the hell I'm going to go on this website. If it can give me the answer to the question right away and take me right to where I want to go, because I may be coming there, I've already, let's put it this way, and we all know what the buying cycle is. It's pretty simple. And, and the fastest and, and best part of your business is referrals. So if somebody refers me to something and I go to that website and I know exactly what I want, the chatbot pops up. I say, yeah, look, I want to buy the XXY. Up it comes and it's done. And, and attention and time are the two sort of things that are uh, uh, today's commodities or, or today's things that we have to think about. Uh, people lose interest very quickly. So we have to get engaged as quick as we can. Mm -hmm. That's my thoughts. Yeah, um, I, the word that pops up for me as you were saying that is um, convenience. <laughs> um, we need, uh, and when when we think about engagement, it needs to there needs to be a convenience aspect there for sure. Yeah. So Roland, you um, put your hand up. Yes, thank you. Uh, the the concept that that strikes me is that. 
these uh, chat bots, especially on a website, can be an invasion or it can be an opportunity. For those that would like to engage, it's a great opportunity. But if you jump in their face too early, it is an invasion. So it's the, the same thing as pop-ups and things. One of the things that I think that we forget about all of, all of this stuff is that they are all levels of social engagement, regardless of whether we're just, we are as one are just reading something, we're getting to know something about somebody or something. And so we're educating ourselves and absorbing information. And at some point we wanna get some feedback which takes engagement to the real level of connection. And from there, it's like, how do you connect? Well, you can chat connect, you can um, video connect, you can audio connect, and all these things are levels of opportunity at a greater or lesser degree. But the different, the, the only thing that's common there is we're building a relationship with an actual person versus before we reach out to connect, we're just learning something ourselves. If we're still getting something, we're still building some kind of relationship, but the real relationship happens when you actually connect with people one on one and get a conversation going. So so that's my observation on that. So it is a gradual process, isn't it? Yes, and furthermore it's all social. I I don't think it's just this or just that or it's uh, we all have the tools there and how it, how we use the tools is the main thing. And uh, I think it's less less of a sales tool and more of a relationship building tool. Which oh. results in sales. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was just going to go there. <laughs> so, Can I say something? Yeah, I, I would like to bring up a totally different aspect, which is not so much correlated at the moment with marketing, but we were going to Google Plus to connect with each other, and we did it for many years and uh, built relationship by responding to each other's posts and uh, private messages and so on and so on. And I liked it very much and then the video and so on. And it happens to me, before we were talking about the timing of, uh, of a relationship, but it's also the form. Because it happens to me often that also on Twitter and also Facebook and also on Google, that I get these private messages, hello, hello my dear, and you know what? I know what they want, you know, so th this is not a way to 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 connect. I mean, I, I say it to, to, to men, if you're seriously uh, interested in find a woman and finding a woman on, on the Internet, don't connect this way. I regularly uh, click away if they don't tell me why they 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 contact me. For instance, I have seen this and this and I would like to know blah, blah. Then I respond. Otherwise, I rigorously click these people away even they might be interesting but it is such an awkward way of of trying to get into connection you know so i always feel like uh responding by saying this is not a dating site go pay for your for the dating site and get out of here <laughs> love is a battlefield i tell you love is a battlefield you gotta you gotta be pretty uh a type uh, uh, uh forward thinker you know yeah but you uh, know i got to know mark via facebook but we did this thing you know we responded uh, uh on different uh on a, on a on a story of of somebody we had uh, comments he commented i commented and only after a while we we connected together and then first writing and then <laughs> <laughs> yeah then it, she's she's talking about other men there mark you know yeah, <laughs> then, i think it was email then and then it was audio and then it was video it was slowly slowly but you know not in the he way past each level right <laughs> yeah, if he had said to me or i to him hello i want uh want to get to know you i immediately would have said uh, oh only hello my dear oh, come on <laughs> don't do that <laughs> well i think it's important to realize that not all connections are engagement and I typically use the plus one as an example. People will say, oh, I got 50 plus ones. I get so much engagement on my posts. But what does a plus one actually mean? 
it right. means something there's no de there's no definite purpose for using a plus one some people come in plus every comment some people only plus the comments that they agree with other people um knowing what a person's intent is is it really engagement at all i, I would if i would love to know um sorry i didn't jump in but i i'm really curious uh not to put you on the spot but uh nathan because I know Nathan, one of his business models is to um, talk to authors to create, you know, books and, and whatnot. And and uh, honestly, I've never I've never thought of Nathan as someone who's on social media. But I know you're on Facebook, so I just I would really like to get insight as to from from someone who's more of a, a writer as opposed to a, a a marketer. At least that's that's the the perception that I have. So sure, well. Um what what do you want to know exactly so i can answer your question better oh i just want to know your thoughts on on you know on on engagement on social engagement and stuff and is it something that you effectively use uh, as an author you know or at least when you do your interviews with with your clients to to build uh to build books and and, and whatnot so is that is that a metric that you use or at least is that a metric that you suggest your authors or your clients to use to build their own uh, books and profiles and stuff like that? Well, the funny thing is um, it, it, I hadn't really thought about it much. And, and, and the interviewing thing, these days I haven't been doing it much as far as uh, helping other people get published. Uh, but what I have been doing is I've been writing articles for different magazines. And one of the things I learned long ago from my mentor is that you can write about anything and get paid for it, even if you don't know the topic. And the way you do it is by sourcing out people to interview. And ironically, I've been asked to write an article about JavaScript frameworks, and I know zero about JavaScript frameworks. So the very first thing that I did actually yesterday, as a case in point, is I went to one of my favorite source sites, which is called Help a Reporter Out, and uh, posted a query and said, I want to interview somebody for this thing, and I've already had somebody contact me this morning, and we're going to go through that process. In terms of social media, I use it all the time. I'm very active on Facebook, uh, not so much on Twitter now, LinkedIn. Uh, in terms of the PTSD thing that I've been working on with my, my colleague, we've got a, a group on, on Facebook. We communicate with them regularly, and we've been doing a, a weekly show and uh, actually, one of the things that we've been going through, and it's been a huge, monumental challenge, is to find out how to speak to our audience in their language. And it's been really difficult. We haven't been able to sell anything because we are missing that um, engagement. And so a couple of things that have come up are um, my partner's uh, uh, partner, his, well, his girlfriend, wife, I'm not sure what to call her, but um, she stumbled on a website to do with some, a woman who is doing something very similar to us and succeeding very well. So what we're doing is we're modeling her approach. We're looking at her site. We're deconstructing the language. We're looking at how she talks to her audience. And we're modeling that so that we can take that approach and bring it back to our audience and then readjust our materials sales materials and so on so that we can speak to people in that way it's been enormously challenging neither one of us had ever imagined that we would be going through this kind of stuff but it's the reality of it and once we get that language nailed down then we can go back into the marketplace and we should be a lot more successful simply because we're modeling somebody who already is successful so it's a long-winded answer so, so basically what you're saying is uh, how, uh, you're pointing to the, the, um, the importance of language and approach as to whether, whether, you, whether you can even get that engagement started. Yeah, like la one of the things that we've been doing or I've been doing personally is uh, experimenting with questions in our group. And last week I, I said to everybody, you know, thanks for your response to our last question. But I have another one for you. What is the number one uh, thought 
that causes you suffering. And the engagement just took off like a flipping rocket. I think we had about 150, 160 responses. There was so much engagement from our audience from that one question that we had to haul in coaches and stuff to respond to it. So it was really quite amazing. It was our first major success in our group. Well, and that's, significant at any rate. Yeah, and that's um, that's a um, that's a concept that comes up in the coaching world all the time. Which is, is what asking the right questions, asking questions. Yeah. 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 Well, the, the the question that I asked and the technique that I used, um, I don't know if any of you are familiar with a guy by the name of Andrew Warner. He runs a, a site called Mixergy, M I X E rgy.com and he does interviews with uh, founders and entrepreneurs from all over the world and I took a course with Andrew about a year and some ago <clears throat> and that's where that what is the number one whatever it is and you the reason that you ask a question like that is because it really helps you to zero in on whatever it is that you're you're looking for and if you structure it in the right way, you can get some really fabulous responses. And we did in our group. I was just blown away by the uh, the engagement that we got out of it. And so it's like, hmm, I wonder what else we can do to increase that engagement to get more of the conversation going. But again, it's it's the languaging and then finding the right audience. And it's been really hard, mm -hmm. one, way harder than either of us had ever imagined. But we've been getting bits and pieces of help along the way, so. Right on. So Roland said he had something, uh, some comments about about your social media. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> well, it would have made some sense if I'd gotten to say it in the early stages of your presentation. <laughs> but um, oh. I look at Nathan as probably one of the best, perhaps the best example among us of how to use social media. I see his questions that he posts in social media, which a question is what entices engagement more than anything else. If you ask the right question, th this you, what you guys talked about was exactly what I was going to exemplify. That uh, Nathan, you go on social media and you ask, "How do we do this? Does anybody have this connection? Does anybody know somebody that does this? Whatever." You ask a question that gets gets me on the other side thinking. Well, I don't know anything about that. Hmm, that's an interesting. So you get me thinking about your subject, and that's energy that that isn't there if you don't ask that question. So you can go online and you can state something, and everyone will say, hmm, and then they'll go away forever. But when you ask a question, you ask them to commit some energy to the subject. And, of yeah. course, people respond to you and builds engagement, and that's what the the, the platform is all about. That's how the, to use the tool, and that's not just using a tool to post stuff. That that use of the tool builds engagement. So that I wanted to use that as an example. Thank you. I, I I think the other thing that I've noticed about because uh, I too um, uh, watch what uh, Nathan is doing on Facebook uh, mainly. Um, um, Nathan, you're you're. Um, I, I've noticed that um, there have been lots of times when you ask for help. Yes. It, yeah. there, it, it hasn't been so much, well, I mean, it's, it really started in a major way about a, a month ago, maybe six weeks ago, where I, I wound up in some real problems, some serious problems, very difficult problems, and also wound up in a situation in terms of my marketing where people were bashing me in a major way and made the way I was feeling about what was going on considerably worse. And I wound up uh, putting up a post about a month ago at this time where I just basically said, you know, what, and, and I phrased it in a different way. I didn't, I didn't want to come across as being needy or, or poor me or any of that kind of stuff. I remember writing something along the lines of what I really wish is that a wise human being would simply just sit with me and and talk with me? I said, I and I'm really at my wit's end with this. I'm I'm having a lot of trouble. I'm tired of being in survival mode, I, and I really don't know what to do. 
and I just put it out there and I was amazed by the response that I got. Um, I had something like about 70 responses in total. A few people wrote to me directly and said, how can I help you? And, and it didn't actually work in terms of our sales letter or any of the process like that, but it did create a lot of engagement. And the funny thing about it is I realized afterwards what I wrote was a perfect example of a sales letter. That was a sales letter. I didn't realize it at the time, but it was designed in such a way that it, it created this response. And I wound up doing something like that again a little while ago and got a fair bit of engagement as well and some good feedback. And what's been happening, which has been really interesting to me, is it shows me who is out there, who's paying attention. It's, it's shown me that uh, there are people on Facebook that you, you don't necessarily know that you're there. They're there. You've got a lot of friends, perhaps, but you don't really know who's paying attention until you do a post like that. And there was another one where I wound up in financial trouble. Um, there was a, a getting stiffed by somebody and they put me in a really major bind. And I put something out there and I was absolutely blown away by the response that I got. And it, it's, it shows me that social media is incredibly powerful. And if you write your message in the right way, you can get a phenomenal response. So I'll give one more example and then I'll stop talking. Um, this whole thing about house sitting, my coach asked me if there's only one place in the world where you could live, where would it be? I chose Bucerias because it's a favorite place. Then I put up a, an ad, a, a specially structured ad on different sites to do with house sitting. Within one hour, I had a response. And it was from a guy who, well, I'm in his house right now. Uh, he was, and so that was really amazing how that came about. And he told me that he read that social media post that I put up a month previously. And he said, you really need some space. You really need room to decompress. Take care of my place for two months, not much going on. And then two other people responded to me from the same ad. And I wound up with responses for house sitting all in the same place of Bruce Rios. Go figure. And nowhere else, nowhere else, it just astonished me. So this and is, that's cool. So the answer to Jay's question is a rather long-winded one, but I, I hope it gives some good examples to the group on on how you can do this kind of stuff. And yeah. from my perspective, uh, I would say that I've been quite successful as of late with social media. And now you're and now look at you. You're sitting there surrounded with hearts. You get a little heart coat rack behind you there. So <laughs> so. Not my doing. It's just part of the house. But thank you. Thank you. It, it, you know, it's funny because the way you, you reach out for help reminded me of like um, almost like a Gary Halbert type of, uh, 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 of letter kind of thing, you know. Really? Uh, that's yeah. Well, it just sounds like it's, it's that's what it sounds like because, you know, we all you and I know G Gary Halbert, right? He's like the Absolutely. copywriter master of the sales letter the kind of long print. form, right? Yeah. So yeah, it was really it's really neat. But, but it's, what, it's what, neat. yeah. What what came up for me when you um um Nathan when you were saying that it's it was like a sales letter, really what it was was um, almost telling a story that um that and you were not you were not reluctant to show your own uh, vulnerability. Oh, yes, I was. Very much so, but... You did it, though. I did it, and I, I knew I was taking a chance that I could get yeah. really bad for it because things like that had happened in the past. But what... There's something else going on here, and it's not totally to do with engagement and stuff like this. It's rather interesting that I'm talking with everybody in this way. But part of what has happened is some huge mindset changes in my life. Uh, there's one thing that I've not shared with this group, but uh, I'll make it very brief, is those of you who've known me for a while, you know that I come from a background of extreme violence, lots of bullying, lots of harassment, mostly at the hands of my immediate family. What you don't know is that I wound up meeting a very dynamic, powerful coach who led me through an entire number of processes and what happened 
roughly six months ago, this thing that I had called PTSD suddenly vanished from my life. That means no more nightmares, no more flashbacks, the inner war is gone, no triggers, no hypervigilance, the entire thing just vanished from my life. And I am now what I consider to be a normal person, whatever that means. I never had a reference point for it. But I just am normal, what I would consider normal. And do I deal with stress and problems? Yeah, sure, same as everybody else. But I don't have all this major baggage that have been driving me nuts for most of my life. I mean, I didn't even, when it vanished, I didn't realize what had happened. I knew something was different. I knew I felt better. This inner war, as I called it, stopped. But I didn't know about the other stuff until I had a conversation with uh, my coach. And then I realized all these things vanished from my life. The reason I'm, we're doing this PTSD thing is because of me. I'm going to my coach and saying, this is unbelievable. I mean, I thought I was going to be cursed with this for the rest of my life. And now it's gone. We, we need to help people. Lots of people suffering that we need to help. Yeah, thanks for posting that, Jay, about the Gary Halbert letter. Um, but yeah, so that's what's been going on, and that's why things are the way they are, because it's not just putting myself out there. I've done that before, and I got bashed, but this time around, I didn't. And I think the reason that I didn't is because I was really telling things as they were. Mm -hmm. I was being quite vulnerable when I did it. I was being as genuine as I could possibly be when I wrote it. But the other part of the mindset shift, because that, that for me is enormous. So I, I've got a, I've got a thought here. Um, I'd like to sure. kind of circle back about how we started with this, this conversation. And it, it seems like there's a lot of, a lot of hesitancy to get people to engage, whether it be on social media or live or whatever. And I want to hear what uh, someone like um, Roland, um, I'd like to hear what what are ways to alleviate that what are what are some effective ways to lower people's guards and to get people to actually answer the chat boxes or to actually leave comments on on sites or engage with um, the audience does the does the person on the video does the person uh, you know need to start or does the audience need to start you know <laughs> I don't think the audience maybe ever starts, very rarely. Uh, most engagement is caused by people watching something or reading something and feeling a connection with the experience that's being explained by the author or by the presenter. And then when people start nodding in their in their minds like, oh yeah, I can relate to that. Oh, oh yeah, that happened to me. You know, the whole, the proverbial, yeah, I know exactly what you mean syndrome. People don't, don't know exactly what you mean, but they can relate to it and they get emotionally drawn in. And once that happens, there's the there's the seed for engagement. But until they they feel something, until they like you or understand you or feel like you've walked the same road as they have or something makes a an emotional connection with the person, whether you talk to them or not, before that happens, uh, the odds of them responding to you are pretty slim. Hmm. Uh, Tim. You know, and Roland makes a good point here that, um, and it's something you learn from training for public speaking. And it just, once you understand these principles, it can carry on to other things like being in social, being in front of a camera, or just talking to someone in the grocery store is there has to be a relatable and that relatable has to be why are you doing it? And does this why connect with who is observing it? Who are you talking to? Whether it be through video or through social media or through an article on your website in the blog. That why that you're doing something, for one, has to be about them, not you. It has to be wanting to give them something instead of getting something for you. Mm -hmm. It has to stir the interest, which is why questions work so well. Have you ever, what would you do if, mm -hmm. how long do you think it would be if you didn't have to deal with, you know, questions, mm -hmm. get their mind engaged with the topic and then 
give to them instead of asking. Allow them time to get comfortable with whatever it is you're talking about first. Mm -hmm. Then once they're comfortable with the subject and they're relating with the you don't want to know more about, okay, what, who are you? Why, why is it important to you about this? What is it? Why should I listen to you? I like your points, but what background do you have? And so now they're looking at more of your why, but they're also looking at who, what, what are you as a person? What are your principles? What are your core values and everything? And it, so it, just like any other arrangement and like the marriage engagement that was used an example early on is there has to be that building process, even in a relationship with people that are considering marriage, there's a questioning period where they're asking one another. They're, they go out for drinks or coffee. It's usually not spilling all the, everything out. It's usually there are questions that each of them have to kind of gain a little information about who and why. And as presenters, whether we're doing the blogs or video or whatever, or social media and such. If we look at it like marketing, we're trying to sell them something and they know it. I mean, as humans, we can spot a sales line a mile away. Mm -hmm. It's like Heidi was bringing up about those. Hi, how are you? In the random chats out of nowhere. But when people see that you have an interest in them and their problems or their issues or their interests, then it becomes reciprocal. So is it marketing? In a way, yeah, because some of the principles are involved. But is it really new as far as social engagement? No. Society has been engaging since it existed because we're humans we're social creatures the question we have to deal with when we're addressing these topics whether it's a chat bot or different presentation mediums is how we present ourselves mm -hmm. and that will open or close the doors to others interest or lack of interest in what we're saying or who we are so we're basically saying it's uh, in it's really no different online than it is in real life face to face. Exactly. Video makes it easier because as social creatures, video allows us to read expressions, gestures. Um, we easier understand voice inflections than we would say text. Mm -hmm. but it's still the same principles. Yeah. So I saw, I thought I saw Bill uh, waving there. Oh, and Fred next after Bill. Yeah. I just wanted to follow up with what both Roland and Tim said. I mean, it, it is a building process. I don't think we can ever, I mean, you can't go out on the street and meet somebody and automatically have them open up and share their life story with you. And I've always been, I've always been of the belief that, and it goes back to what Zig Ziglar says, you have to give first. So you have to, you have to share what you're passionate about to help people uh, without the expectation of them coming and buying your product to sell. But I still consider myself a marketing because I want people to find my information. I want them to engage with me and tell them, tell me what additional information they want or what they thought about the information I got. So that's a building. I mean, it took, took me six months and yes, I could have probably seeded that by asking the right questions, but in my particular niche, come and consume information. They don't really want to get too personal, but then at some point they make the comments, love your website. This is great information whatever and to me that's that's the best engagement i can get as opposed to somebody watching my video about a house that was eight hundred dollars a month and and typing in seems expensive to me mm. that's not engagement so 
again, I think from my point of view, it's a building process. It's a matter of putting yourself out there with no expectation of return. Helping people, uh, people will see that about you. They'll uh, recognize, um, they'll see it and recognize it, but they'll also appreciate why you're there. But I think it's still all a bit of a building process. It's not like you can throw your website up on Monday and start expecting people to buy your product on Friday. And if that's your intention, then you're probably not doing engagement marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I certainly am, uh, agree. It, 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 is, um, it is a process. It definitely is a process. And certainly um, that whole idea of sharing uh, without expectation seems to be um, um, the right way to go for sure. Now, uh, Fred, I think you had had uh, something you wanted to say. I just wanted to add to what uh, Roland, well, Jay started and then Roland and then Tim said, it, it comes back to public speaking. And I'm working with a couple of people who are competing and it's all about the audience and it's all about how you make them feel. There's a statement which I think is very true in all aspects, not only public speaking, but engagement. People not remember what you said, they won't remember what you're trying to tell them, but they will remember how you made them feel. Mm -hmm. the secret. If they feel, wow, this is something I can relate to this person. And if you made them feel that there's something in common, you're now going to engage them. And that's the secret, mm -hmm. I think, of everything that you've said. If you can make them feel that you're the same or you have the same issues, and Nathan came up with some you know, good questions and so on. Um, so I enjoyed this very much. I was in the background because uh, Indiana Jones, the French bulldog, is snoring in the background here. So uh, <laughs> he's sleeping, but he's snoring on the other side of the room. But it is how you make people feel. That is the secret. And I think it really what Tim mentioned and Roland mentioned. But the dog is not and engaged. A, no, the dog is not and engaged. That's, <laughs> and that's a great point because I have so many people on my website that said, I read, read your About You page. My wife and I are in very similar situations. We're looking to move to Belize for the same reasons. So that right there gives me yeah. yep, a relatability and a connection to those people. Exactly. You made them feel, hey, you're the same as them. I'm one of you. I, he understands me. I understand him. That's it. Once they feel that, you're engaged. Mm -hmm. That's a I'm going to have to leave in a few minutes. Yeah, I, I was going to leave. Gonna say uh, we are past the top hour, but thank you, Fred, because I I think that is just a, a, a great way for us to uh, wrap up our uh, exploration of, of engagement. It's all about how we make them feel. <laughs> so um, I, I think it's time for me to say and remind everyone it's important to do what you love with passion, and that's a signal to uh, both Bill and uh, Roland. <laughs> so um, hopefully uh, we'll see uh, everyone again next week. So. <laughs>